Laura here. I'm here today to do another book haul. This is my ALA haul. It is focusing on the fantasy and science fiction books that I picked up from ALA in Washington, D.C. Overall, when I titled everything together, I got like 130 books. I think maybe 139 books, actually. So, well, these hauls are going to take a while. That's why I'm splitting it into parts. Um, already will have gone up my top 20 reads I got, which are like my highly anticipating ones, the ones I think I'm going to read the quickest. I then posted my contemporary and thriller reads, and these are my fantasy. My fantasy is always the biggest category that I have because that is the genre I read the most of, mostly YA. Um, I am tipping my toe into adult stuff, but it's just not, it's just not something that I gravitate towards as much. So, if I know anything about these books, I will give you guys a little bit of a heads. If they haven't come out yet, I will give you dates. Again, I'm just doing this because people are interested in hauls and I think it will be fun. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So the first book I picked up was The Lost Dreamer by Liz Cueta. And this was signed by her because she was there. It's a stunning fantasy inspired by ancient Mesoamerica. This gripping debut introduces a slow lineage of seers defiantly resisting the shifting patriarchal state that would see them destroyed. Hmm. Ooh. She's able to see beyond reality, and she's carried a rare gift of dreaming truth. Mm. So that's interesting. So she's like a seer and a dream man. I think the king dies. Um, her mother... Her mother... There's two main characters, I think, and they kind of get interrupted. Ooh, I, I love books about seers and dreamers. So I'm really excited for this one. This one's great. This book's already out, but that sounds really, really cool cover is also super pretty um whenever Mesoamer mesoamerican stories are really interesting to me i have read a couple of them in the rick riordan presents series that i've really wanted to read it like more of so this one sounds really interesting and this book did come out i think or just came out can't remember but it is out because i have a hardback or it's coming out soon i think um and then the next one which is from disney disney did a really really good job they had no publishing issues um, Anna Greenville by Marco Takamana is, this comes out in October. Sorry, the glare was a little bit awkward. Um, but this is, this is the story of how I became Anna of Greenville. It's also the story of how I found my true true and how I need, needed to be, maybe come to Greenville of all places to make that happen. And this is a modern reimagining of Anne of Green Gables. And in this version, Anne is an ABBA-loving, queer, Japanese-American singer, actor, and writer of disco operas. In this coming-of-age fan favorite, Mako Tanagana sees the classic tale in a whole new light, refreshing, bold, and unapologetically unique. Anne of Greenville will make you want to stand up and sing. So, yeah. I know she wrote something. Oh, she wrote Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. And a couple of other books. So yeah, this one's really excited. I hope we get to read this one soon, but it does come out in October. I have a lot of retellings. Maybe I'll do a retelling vlog if you want that. Comment below. Because it was really, really glary. But I also got a copy of Queen Among the Dead by Lindsay Livingston. This does not come out until next year. Um, and this is a bound manuscript, not for sale. So it's a stunning Celtic YA fantasy adventure set in an ancient kingdom of Airy, inspired by legends of the first true queen of Ireland. Perfect for shans of Shelby Mahorn and Adrian Young. Rick Riordan in the next couple of years is coming out with an Irish mythology book. So if I get anything that's sort of in that vein, I will probably read it. I have read something by Lindsay Livingston. I think she wrote the Valiant trilogy, and I think I have book one. So I really hope I like this one because this cover is so pretty. Irish mythology is something I'm really interested in. I really want to go to Ireland one day. So. That's cool. And I also got a sequel, One Girl in All the World. This is um, the Kendra Blake novel. This is the sequel to In Every Generation. I'm in the middle of reading it, but this is a sequel. It comes out next year, so maybe I'll do a reading vlog where I binge the series. We will see. A lot of Disney's books are coming out in 2023, so mind the dates because that's just what they had. Um, and then City of Hooks and Scars by Estelle Lurie. This actually just came out. This is the sequel for City of Villains. I haven't actually read that one yet, but I am more excited to pick it up now that I have the sequel at Disney. Um, and then the next book I picked up was The Bone Weaver by Aiden Papadouris. He also wrote City Beautiful. Um, and I don't know much about this one. I know that I do have an e-arc of this one, I think. 
but it's a dark fantasy featuring unique magic monsters from Slavic folklore and mythology, LGBT representations, the trio includes Vanya, a bisexual magic wielder, and Mechel, the incarnado Jade Tazar. Mm. So, LGBTQ plus friendly, and this cover is really, really cool. Um, yeah, I love books about magic. I tend to read them in the fall. Another Buffy novel is Big Bad. This is by Lily Anderson. Um, Demondale, California, 1999. Like Sunnydale, but a whole lot more evil. Ugh. Oh, this is an alternate reality, I guess. Oh, this is when the, oh yeah, this is like, this is like, um, a paranormal universe. What happens if after season three, the mayor won? Ooh, that's a cool concept. Oh, so now join, Aunt, uh, so now join Andrew, Anya, and must recruit a team of Demon Dale's most notorious villain, and even Ripper, to save the world, but that'll be no easy feat. They, they have to put their differences aside and stop the worst thing that could ever come written by good. Good. Hmm. Ooh, so this one sounds interesting. Oh, I did not know this one. This one comes out actually in September, so I really am excited. I'm probably gonna have to rewatch season three of Buffy, but it's been a, it's been a bit. Um, I also picked up a copy of Silver in the Mist by Erica Victoria, and this is an immersive fantasy novel for fans of Neil Valera and Lindsay Miller. Brings much needed and multifaceted so asexual representation onto YA shelves. Ooh, this is another. This is an asexual main character. I don't think I've ever read. Um, but that sounds really, really cool. This was from Inkyard, and it comes out in November. Luminari by Melissa Landers is one that I was super excited for. This is, like, a her, I think it's, she normally writes science fiction, I think. And I did want to read her other books, and then I just, actually, I read one of her books. Um, it was, like, the first book I ever got from a book convention. But this comes out, this one comes out in, in December, so... That one's really, really sad. I didn't read the summary, but she normally does write, like, science fiction stories. <gasps> and then William Ritter, Bloody Fool for Love, is by a Spike prequel. And this is a verified villain, a slayer killer, a god among vampires, but most of all, a hopeless romantic. Spike is definitely one of my favorite characters in all of Buffy, so I'm really excited for this one. I think you guys are just going to get a Buffy reading vlog. I've decided, so <laughs> hope you guys like that. Um, and then I got Nemesis and the Swan by Lindsay K. Bandy. Um, I actually met her, and she was awesome. So this is, um, this is coming in October. To, oh, this one, this is this has actually been out for a while. I think it came out during the pandemic, and she says she was having a lot of problems getting books at that point. Um, but this is in Revolutionary Paris. The secrets behind an eerie set of brooches will either save Helen Zerbaz to the guillotine or save her life. Ooh. And I love historical fiction books. I've been reading a lot of Regency romances, so hopefully this one is just as exciting. And I will have to check it out and see if there's a sequel out because this one did come out a couple years ago. Um, and then Peter Pan and Wendy, Tiger Lily and the Secret Treasure of Neverland. Um, I think that this is like loosely inspired by the Tiger Lily movie that's coming out, I think. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a, it's, it is a Tiger Lily tale and it comes out next year or so. Again, I might need to rewatch Peter Pan, we'll see. I also got The Wicked Ones by Robert Benway, Two Sisters, One Chance for the Throne, also does come out next year. Um, and I don't know what this one's about, but I think it has to do, this may be... <gasps> yeah, this is about Drisella and Anastasia. I think. Are they? I think these are Anna. I think these are Cinderella's evil stepsisters. We'll see. But this one sounds interesting. And again, a lot of the Disney books I tend to just put in my classroom, and the kids take them when I'm done. Funeral Girl by Emma K. Olean. This is a girl that she her parents run a funeral home. She winds up seeing the death, and she has to fulfill people's dead requests before sending them to whatever spirits go. Down so she can't escape the fears and questions of her guilt of what happened to her beloved grandma, the first spirit she ever revived. Ooh. And then her classmate dies, and she can't resist bringing his spirit back. Ooh. But maybe the task that he wants her to fulfill is not so easy. I'm intrigued. All these books sound really, really good. I just have to get around to reading them. Now I'm going to go get you my other stack.
last stack but again a lot of the fantasy books that i was most excited for was in my other video if i remember i'll link it below but i think it's just the video i posted last week so long live the pumpkin queen by shira anjar the nightmare didn't end after christmas and this is a retelling of uh, the nightmare before christmas i think and i don't know if it has a big plot honestly like i just think it's like a retelling um and there's no like summary so but long live the pumpkin cream i'm really excited for this one it sounds cute and it comes out actually soon it comes out the end of this month so it will be great for halloween um and then another one is raising the horsemen by serena valentino this comes out in september and it is the, of the disney villain series comes a ghostly new standalone that reimagines the legends of sleepy hollow through the eyes of a modern teen that sounds great Ooh. Raising the Horsemen. I'm, I like that one. That sounds interesting. A lot of these are retellings. Disney is really into the retelling game, and they come up with a lot of cool ones. So, yeah, a lot of these books I posted through Disney are just a lot of retellings, but I'm equally excited for them. I also was able to meet Allison Noel and get Stealing Infinity Sign, which is another one about numerology that I'm really excited for. Um... So I have to get around to this one. It is going to be, it's a, such a pretty cover, but numerology has always interested me and I did start reading it and then I got a little bit distracted. Another book I picked up, which is coming out in September is Rust in the Root by Justina Ireland. I'm just gonna read the little blurb. Um, it says, Justin, an author of visionary New York Times bestseller, Dread Nation, returns with a spellbinding new historical fantasy set in the crossroads of race power in a depression era America. And this character has my name, Laura, so I hopefully will get around to reading it soon. Um, and yeah, it sounds interesting, so. I didn't get to read her other series, but that one might be. This is one I was really excited for, because this, this one was an older arc. This, it came out, I think, in March of 2022, but it's Blood Scion by Deborah Philly. And oh my god, this cover is just stunning. Stunning, stunning cover. This is what they deserve. They wanted me to be a monster. I will be the worst monster they ever created. And I'm just going to read the little blurb on the back. Following one girl's journey of magic, injustice, power, and revenge, their emotionally charged debut, inspired by Uber and Ojiri Majali, will utterly enthrall and capture fans of Children of Blood and Bone and Ember in the Ashes. Ooh. To check up on the puppy who you could see is right behind me. Um, but I also picked up a copy of Direwood by Catherine Yu. This is coming out in September. And it is in this velvet-clad 1990s gothic horror Aji encourages a charming vampire who wants to lure her into the woods, just like her missing sister. Ooh, so that one sounds good. Another vampire novel, so maybe I'll do a vampire reading vlog. I have a lot of ideas for themed reading vlogs. We'll see if they all get read. Another one I got was Monsters Born and Made by Tavi Berwa. This is in this epic South Asian-inspired fantasy novel. Corel grew up battling monsters that live in the surrounding seas, but it didn't prepare her to face the cunning cruelty of the running elite. And this also comes out in September really excited for this one this cover is so pretty um another book that i picked up that i'm really excited for a jamie Paxton, i think oh yeah this is the one that wrote the oh, i don't remember the name of it but i know she wrote one of the middle grade series that i really really enjoyed this is the vermilion emporium it comes out in november and this is radium girls meets Howl's moving cow and a story of timeless love and deadly consequences this one, this one sounds really exciting. I just, I picked this one up and it seemed right up my alley. And I love the Radium Girls. That's like more of like an interesting science take. So hopefully that's what this is, but I'm really excited for it. Another book I picked up was The Sevenfold Hunters by Rosie Engel. This one I think is the, yeah, this is the alien one. So this is a gripping non-pack alien hunting romp perfect for fans of new Solomans. Oh. So this is the Sevenfold Hunters, and this is like an alien themed novel. I think the alien like killed. Oh, after witnessing her boyfriends at the hand, Artemis is shocked to find the aliens known as the Nostra actually exist, and that her boyfriend is a member of the Weed Squad of Alien Hunters. Hmm. So maybe she has joined that thing. That sounds interesting. So this one comes out in October. Um, and then another one that everyone was talking about was Dead Flip by Sarah Farazin. And this is Edge of Your Seat Horror, laced with humor, perfect for friends of Stranger Things. I'm on a Stranger Things high. I just finished watching Stranger Things. I actually really, really want to rewatch it. So if I can get anything that has that sort of vibe, I will pick it up. And this is supposed to come out in September. From, uh, I don't know where this one kind of, I think this is, Algonquin. So. 
And then Poisons, The Poison Season by Maria Rutherford. Um, with imaginative world building, engaging writing, forbidden romance, the story is plans to draw readers in from the pages of heart topping climax. A lush atmosphere of fantasy for fans of Ebony Craig and Margaret Rogerson. I don't know if this is a sequel, but I have wanted to pick up books by this author in this in the future. Like I've read books, I wanted to. I have actually a lot of books in my queue, but this one sounds interesting. I'll have to look it up if I have to read the other book first. This Woven Kingdom by Tara Hara Maffey. This came out in February, and I just never got around to reading this. I literally must have returned this book virtually like 19 different times so when i saw this i was like you know what i'm gonna get it so i have a physical copy and i can just read it so but i've heard really good things about that one oscar from elsewhere by jacqueline moriarty is one that i have heard really good she writes very like interesting novels i have i have another book by her that maybe i'll read that and then i'll read this in a reading vlog because that one was a lot older but i don't know much about this but it was just like on a table and she hasn't wrote everything, like anything recently, so I'm intrigued, but it's called Oscar from Elsewhere. I think it has to do with like a boarding school. And also Felina, this is a translator work as well. Um, um, a Love Child of Philip Pullman and M Michael Crichton, a really cool blend of historical sci-fi and thriller, um, is one of the French translators. And I don't know what this book's about, honestly. But I'm excited to pick it up. I actually have to read a translated book for one of my challenges for the Avengers Reading Challenge. And historical sci-fi drawing thriller that was from France, you never realized you, how much you needed it. So I'm excited for that. That one sounds interesting. I think that is all my fantasy reads. Um, let me know in the comments what book you would like me to see me, see me read first. If you have any, you know, like reading vlog recommendations if you want me to do like a themed reading vlog comment below some of your ideas and i will try to get them done and i hope you guys are staying safe and being well bye friends